Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to episode 153 of the Titan Forge podcast. I'm Ratnos, joined by Trill. Yo. And Tettles. Yo, what's up? We're back. We are indeed back once again. Uh, and this week we have a bunch of kind of Q&A questions that we've sourced from uh, you all across Twitter and Discord and such. So uh, hopefully there should be some interesting topics in there as well. Next week, we are intending to run a UI-focused episode, given that UI is a, a hot topic now. There's a, the whole overhaul of the core UI, and we did one a while ago that was pretty popular, so uh, we may look out for our Twitter in the next couple of days. We may seek either questions or suggestions or even screenshots of your UIs uh, to have as content for that show. So, uh, Trell, not going to be here next week, by the way. We, okay. You mentioned that to me. Uh, as yeah, I just, I just remembered that. Ah, okay. So, you and I will have to finagle a guest for next week's show. Yeah, we will get a UI expert on. Uh, and then, and, yeah. And then I think the show after that, we're probably going to do like uh, beginning of Dragonflight, like kind of what to expect, what you should be doing after you level kind of show. And then the show after that, it's American Thanksgiving on that Thursday, and we're not, we will not be doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and then after that will be week one of Dragonflight. Expansion. Yeah. So we'll have, we will uh, do a show, uh, but we'll have new content. Yeah. yeah, that will be right in the first week of leveling. So we are getting down to the wire here, uh, which is pretty exciting. And one other thing that's happening, even though we are right close to the finish line, is there are still some big changes, big sweeping changes happening to the core gameplay of Dragonflight. One was this health change. So player stamina and creature damage were both buffed by 40% uh, in Dragonflight content, basically, at level 70, which... Then Blizzard wrote this long post explaining after it kind of it got leaked sort of or or discovered on the beta build and then people were complaining about it and then they posted this and then a lot of people were like okay a lot of this actually does kind of make sense although there are a lot of I think good uh, criticisms still of this specific implementation here but uh, they said healing has felt too powerful largely of the impact of those ten additional talent points generally we increase player health at the same rate as throughput uh, ensuring the pace of the game feels relatively consistent. Uh, so deepening bond, increasing player stamina to offset the player gains or the power gains of covenant abilities. Um, but we've decided to, uh, or I guess when damage mitigations abilities and healing are too strong, the only way to threaten players is to make the damage spiky so that you can still die. So they can still potentially kill you because healers can top you off really quickly. Right. Um, this isn't very satisfying gameplay. Increasing the player health gives players more time to react to incoming damage, and it makes players' choices about cooldowns and mana management more meaningful. So notably, it's it's not just a player health increase, though. It's a, it's an incoming damage increase, too. Yeah. So you could you could effectively think of this as a nerf to healing throughput. That would be so, yeah. an, another way of doing it that would do the same thing. I actually, I actually think that this is a decent change overall for the state of the game. I do think that they may want to look at healer mana um in dragonflight i don't know how you guys have been doing in raid testing but like three or four minutes into a fight already our healers are like really struggling for mana and obviously we're not doing the fights optimally and stuff like that but it, it seems like that is just like as a whole already been an issue and now with these changes coupled on top of that i do i have some concerns about just like mana in general across all of the healing specs there's also a bug in the game where when you start a dungeon right now, the, the healer just starts at 20% mana for some reason. Okay, a and there's also a bug where like food on the beta is not giving the appropriate amount of mana, but that's almost irrelevant to the actual topic where it's like, oh, they're, it seems like they're spending too much. Yeah, I, I will say I agree. I have felt that as well from raid testing, but it is like very common during early prog that your healers are just oom the whole time, right? And then it's like as you start getting better and better at the fights, the mana starts, it, it always works out. It's like, you, you, I, I always remember during progression, it's like the boss is at 50%, our healers are room, and it's like, okay, there's no way we can just carry forward this throughput all the way through, and then somehow they do. Um, but it seems, yeah, but it true. even seems like the historically like low mana intensity healers are, are also going like re really early, and I'm like, huh. Yeah, so, I don't know, well, I, 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 share, I share your concern there, I think, although I'm, I do, I do think, think, think there is a chance a it'll change. be fine. Yeah, I, I, I think in theory this is a really good change. I think that uh, the dungeons do have a ton of spiky damage right now, so this is going to make them very painful. But I think that's okay because they're trying to make the dungeons harder at like the 15, 16 level and beyond than they have been in the past. I I am a little bit concerned about tank self healing because some tanks self heal percent based, which hasn't been nerfed. Mm -hmm. But some tanks self heal flat, 
which has been nerfed uh, by this. So uh, or a combination of the two. Yeah, the more the like, you know, Blood DK Deathstrike, for instance, has seen no changes as a result of this. Right. You're still death striking just as hard as you used to. But uh, if your healing is is based off of like a flat number instead, uh, it got a 40 percent nerf effectively here, which uh, I'm not super excited about. I, I think tank tank self sustain was in a good place before this. And so the specs that are getting it nerfed didn't need it, I don't think. Um, yeah. And, and also with this like health and damage increase on the whole spectrum they didn't increase the primary stat or other stats of our players so like the the number heals the number based on attack power or whatever heals are just gonna be exactly the same i mean, right that's, that's the that, point yeah i've saw, i've seen some complaints about a couple of abilities in particular like i think i think i saw revival being the one that was brought up the most where it's like okay this thing actually doesn't hit for anything anymore it's may, maybe not even yeah it's like, like, like healing for 20k or something <laughs> 20k if you have 400 khp or whatever 100 the 300 yeah. whatever khp it's, or actually I get, it's 40 percent increase so you probably have like what like 250 i haven't logged in yet yeah, yeah. you have like 260 i think yeah that something like that i mean 80 if, it, if it's healing for 30k like yeah, and i don't even know if this button's worth pressing any effects that scale based off of incoming damage well there are some group wide ones right there's like rewind from uh from evokers from preservation evokers there's also devotion aura barrier yeah uh atrophic poison or whatever all of those effects got got buffed uh by this change Such as death well got buffed. relative power rel he, relative power wise well i mean yeah like which is yes. like it's, it is now more important to have those effects in your raid than it than it used to be um which i am not a super fan of as well because i already thought those effects were too powerful um so i i don't like seeing them getting a relative buff but uh. yeah I think it's interesting because we also saw like a lot of uh, hot fix like tuning of specs um, come this week. I mean, we saw we kind of I kind of clowned on enhancement shamans on Twitter a little bit when they got a twenty five percent aura nerf. Oh, I think the Windwalker Walker monk that got thrown out was like a fifteen ish percent nerf. I think that like d damage just across the board, uh, according to Blizzard, at least uh, looking at these patch notes and kind of reading in between the lines, damage just across the board is too high uh, from DPS too. So I think that they're still trying to get the game in a state where it's like. Okay, these are the numbers that we were looking for. Yeah, I mean, I think it's actually a good sign. I think maybe the enhancement changes were a little weird because it was just a flat, huge number. But like the Windwalker nerfs were actually pretty good upon review. Like it's a thirteen percent single target nerf from just pure damage. Looking at the damage decreases on single target, and then like on most AOE profiles, it's somewhere in the range of ten, yeah. fifteen percent less. It Enhance had a lot of builds that they wanted to play, though, and so if you wanted to nerf one of them, they would just play a different one that was, like, similar damage-wise. Uh, were you playing much Enhanced Radnos? Do you know much about... No, I I haven't played any Enhanced on beta, so... Uh, I, I do think, yeah, like, yeah, if, if a spec has a lot of good builds and they're close or anything like that, then the correct way to nerf it is just a flat percent nerf across the board, yeah. right? Because you, was... you don't want to mess the relative balance of the specs, or the builds, if they're all good. It, it seemed like enhanced players, at least to me, seemed like they were okay with the twenty, like the the nerf to being to their aura. They were not okay with the amount of the nerf. Is what is what it seemed like the uh, uproar was about. Yeah, I mean, twenty five percent is a very big number to <laughs> deliver as a nerf. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't. Know, I mean, I, I have been in some groups with enhanced shamans doing more than twenty five percent, more than the next I... closest person. So I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure it was that far off. Enhanced shamans were doing 75k like on terrorists and raid testing, and everybody else is like 40. Yeah, so, so I, don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe 25 is the right number. I, I, I mean, we have more raid testing tomorrow, so maybe we'll see. We will indeed. Yeah. Um, it, it was funny though to just see the single line, like no dev note or anything about it. But, <laughs> yeah, because like I, I think Boom. I think if you're gonna nerf somebody by that much, you just need to put a little dev note in there that that just says like they were really really overperforming, and we'll, we're gonna monitor this to make sure that they're still okay. Like you just put that note in there, and people are like thirty percent less mad easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting change though. It's I guess somewhat concerning to see the kind of fundamentals like this be adjusted so close to launch after especially after all the testing but on the other hand you know you do the testing you find out you need to do this right and then you do this so i i think it makes sense um anyways that's our dragonflight news for the week we may get some more i've heard rumblings there may be some more coming mid-show but for now we're going to start off with our q a uh so we've got a bunch of different questions coming in from discord and twitter our first question comes from uh, PT, who says, what would be your thoughts on a solo queue ladder for M+, 
queue up in your role, get randomly matched up via an MMR and based on rating. Uh, you get a key level and a dungeon, and then it's a battle for points with titles at the end of the season. I'm down. I, I excel at that. I'm so down. It would like, be a different type of game. It definitely is. That's that's like basically what I did in uh, this uh, recent push to the title and only pugs that I did. Except that you wouldn't be able to control like doing multiple keys back to back. So you definitely have like a lower ceiling of the keys you could do than in, than in uh, coordinated groups. But it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I do think it's an intriguing idea. I like I like thinking about like the good case of how it could go. It could be a lot of fun to queue. I do worry that player behavior would be could be potentially a lot worse than a you know like obviously like you can't what vote kick I guess maybe you could vote kick in this mode but even so it's like it's not like a regular M plus group where you know you're there you're invited right and you can get kicked at any time if you're being a jerk or something like that yeah on the other hand maybe that's a good thing maybe you know maybe uh. I don't know. Um, I, I guess I would the, be down to try this, probably. The downside of an MMR system is that it implies that your score can go down. I mean, yeah, it would have to be able to. Yeah, which is like yeah. inherently, I mean, it's 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 very different than what we currently have. So, I mean, like, what, what you currently have is like a very meta-focused um, game where people will re-roll to specs and stuff like that. Whereas, like, with an MMR system, you may get matched up with some, like, really shitter class sometimes. Well, and you're like, oh, no. But if they're appropriate for the them. MMR, right, like, then they should be, in theory, yeah, sure. timing keys at the same rate as anybody else at that MMR, right? Um, I don't know. I feel like that would be, it would be good for class balance. Maybe this is just a weird take, but okay. if they had more data on, like, solo queue gameplay and, like, some specs were obviously always way worse on AoE... Like I feel like that could be pretty good for the for data. I feel yeah. like I'm getting I feel like I get salty though if I rolled into a brewmaster monk that's not you and uh instead of a blood decay. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? Is like I, I worry that the toxicity created in this mode would be uh could especially like if you have to lose MMR and you feel like you're losing MMR because other people in your group are bad, right? Yeah. Uh, like I I'm a I'm a well adjusted individual. I wouldn't be flaming anybody in this mode ever, but like <laughs> Ooh, I, I I worry about 90% of the player base being able to avoid like having an out first. I mean, I think I don't even think I don't think I'd say anything, but I do think in terms of I'd be kind of annoyed. It'd be like, oh, well, dude, they're literally playing something that is so much worse than the meta stuff, and this is like, all right, well, now I'm losing points for this. I don't know. I mean, I think I think the meta stuff. I think it would, a, a big upside of this would be that you wouldn't you, you'd be able to get into groups on whatever you were playing and yeah. literally just however much value you were providing you would you would go up and that's, down that's what i'm the, saying it's like that's a, that's yeah a massive upside. i think a big problem with coordinated high mythic plus is that you never you never see the classes that don't do damage because people know already by the time they get up to that key level that they're not going to be able to do that key level on those classes so they just play the better classes and yeah. so they don't get any data from those worst specs whatsoever in high yeah. mythic plus aoe situations and so in this mode all that data would be like equal across the board right. i mean i guess it would still be weighted more for the people practicing the specs that they want to do in higher keys but it would be pretty cool in my opinion and we would it would we'd stop hearing like oh you know nobody gets it like the reason that people don't get high on the spec is because they don't get invited because like if you could solo queue you have you, like the getting invited part stops being an issue although the whole yeah. thing of like good players won't play the bad specs would still be an uh, argument that people would make to that i mean still like I, I agree definitely... with you, Charles. That it would be it would be potentially more likely we'd see the bad specs getting buffed uh, in that world. There, there are definitely some complications. I think it, I think it would be interesting. It would be fun. I would find it fun because then I have I'm re less reliant on finding four other people to play. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm, more, I'm able to kind of just sometimes like, you just don't want to find four players. You know, that's like a, a huge burden to start playing the game. Sometimes what we would do is like we would. I mean, we still know the top players of our region. We would just like link Discord the moment we get into. The yeah, right. Like, I think that would be common. Voice. Yeah, I think yeah, having like true. a robust like honor system like League of Legends does, like some if they if they wanted to implement something like this, I think it would be really important to have like good incentives to be like not toxic and like yeah. in fact actively not toxic and not just like saying nothing the whole way through. Like I, I think some. Something like that being really heavily selected for, and this would be important. I th I do think that like there there would end up needing to be like some uh, 
some group composition uh, bad luck protection <laughs> to make sure you couldn't, I don't know, get three of the same class. <laughs> yeah, three range, don't allow, like, at least have one range, one melee, something like that. Something, Dude, if, I, yeah. if, I, if I queue into a triple moon king group, I'm leaving. I may as well have already accepted my point loss. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I don't, that's, I don't that's even, bannable. I don't need to waste my time. <laughs> Everyone beams the first important cast. Three casts go off in the next. I'm zoning out. Yeah, no, zoning nobody out. has beam talented. That's a 10% DPS loss. <laughs> nobody has beam talented yet. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> All right, next question comes from uh, Wilco, who says, how much do you think Max's class slash spec tree discussion influenced design cha uh, changes? Uh, and then in parentheses, there were several times where a class discord or forum was saying one thing, and the one person he had on his show said another, and then a change happened based on the, the YouTube. Ooh. That's, that's hard to say. I mean, Max does have a lot of clout. Uh, direct influence though i would say probably not yeah I'd... uh i don't think he's i don't think that his uh stuff was like directly the cause of changes i'm i'm also i'm generally skeptical of like uh, i you i read things like this and i it feels like it's attempting to like any anything that's kind of like content creator blamey because there there's definitely like in this question there's definitely some undertones of like a class discord forum was saying one thing and the one person he had on his show said another and then a change happened based on that like i i don't think that's generally the truth right yeah well, i i don't know enough about all the changes and who was saying what and i definitely don't know what the class discord consensus is because i'm not i don't read any any of the class discords uh so i i guess i i can't like straight up disprove this or anything but uh well I can tell you that my feedback on my class tree did not get taken from Max's show. So in that aspect, it did not go through. Uh, but I think that there are just tons of feedback avenues for Blizzard these days, and they change every every so often too with different people working there with, with how they receive feedback and how they look for feedback. And so it's all just kind of like you throw, a, you throw your feedback at the dartboard and sometimes you'll hit the right spot. I don't know. That's how I see it. What may also have happened is Max has a very large platform. Um, and then it's like, Somebody will go on their show, they'll they'll give their opinion, and then people will be like, they'll be thinking about uh, improvements that they can make to the spec, and then they'll take to the forums and be like writing their own feedback relative to, due to in part kind of what the person said on Max's show, but also due to in part kind of what they think about the spec as well. And so there may have also been some uh, swaying of opinions due to, due to stuff like that. But do I think that Max directly had impact on class spec design? Probably not. Do I think that it's... Probably not. Do I think that like it caused like some people to give more feedback and things like that. And like almost inadvertently directed people in some cases, probably, but it, I don't think it's like the cause of changes. Yeah. And I don't know, man, if the, if Blizzard ever implements a bad change, because like Max had somebody on his show that suggested a bad change or had like a bad take about their class, which we all, do, we all have bad takes about the classes we, we play. Like that happens from time to time. I've, right. I've, I've had bad ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's not, his fault and he shouldn't stop doing those things that's that's blizzard's fault for doing a bad change i don't know i mean the developers are allowed to make their own decisions they don't have to listen to community yeah feedback. Uh, in general i think oh, absolutely I, I think that the dragonfly beta cycle was much better for those videos being uh coming out as often as they did and and uh talking about all the specs like they did all right next question comes from samamphoros who says Interested to hear y'all talk about mob design lately, where it seems like they've stopped including filler mobs, and now you've got trash packs with two different priority kicks, one priority stun, a soothe, etc. Personally, I would like to see them ease up on this a little. It sucks when even a coordinated group can wipe because they overlapped kicks once. Spires is a good example of this. Yeah, I think this question's Actually. aiming at the progression of Mythic Plus design over the last two X packs, where like every pack seems to have just twice the amount of mechanics as the dungeons used to back in legion or warlords of draenor which uh is very very apparent when you do like the the old dungeons that are coming back this season and then you do one of the new dungeons it's like holy crap there's so much more going on every single pull i do think that the pendulum has moved back a little bit in dragonflight like the, it's a little bit less every single I mod agree. has a thing than shadowlands was but yeah i agree i think filler is an important part of dungeons um and in our non AOE capped world, they get to add some of that in without it being uh, as bad as it as it would have been in Shadowlands for like like because in Shadowlands if you took a pack of three important mobs and then you added four filler mobs that would make the pack much less yeah. fun to play because of the AOE cap. Whereas now that's fine. 
yeah funnily, funnily enough i mean Charles, you and i were talking about this like when we were doing dungeons uh last weekend i i mean i thought that shadow moon burial grounds they had a lot of filler mobs but the downside of having so many filler mobs in shadow moon is like not everything not many things outside of the bosses felt deadly yeah i think shadow moon is like the the farthest example of like it's very simple the whole dungeon is very simple i think that one could actually be beefed up for the average player even yeah and, and I have a hard time looking at this from like an experienced player perspective versus average player. And I try to see both. Like, I don't mind the complexity of these new dungeons at all. I think it's really cool, but I, I can imagine being like a new tank player or the average DPS player going into this and just getting overwhelmed for the first like 20 runs of the dungeon. And so I think they're, they should do something like bring Shadow Moon up a little bit in difficulty yeah. and take the new dungeons down, just tone them down a little bit. In my mind, the only one that's got two complex or trash is no, no code offensive. Um, I actually think that Ruby Life Pools is more or less okay in a lot of spots. I think Algathar, I mean, they got a lot of free mobs in the Algathar Academy. Um, Azure Vault. I think Algathar is the closest to being like in the middle of the spectrum. Azure Vault's got a lot going on, actually. Azure Vault has a lot going on. Ruby even has a lot going on. Like, I, I made a video on it and I had to go back and rewatch the pull three times just to get all the talking in about every single mechanic. <laughs> like, oh, love that. You, you pull the, the thunder dragon. Yeah. And he, he fires off like four deadly mechanics in 10 seconds. Like, and if you're not prepared for all those, then you're probably going to wipe that. That you, mob is just straight up banned, right? Uh, uh it's I banned it's because pull, you don't need it for count. <laughs> you, you have to pull one of the dragons. Okay. I think that that's actually the easier one with a coordinated group. Okay. And high keys at least. Fair enough. So, do you do you think that the dungeons trash mechanically are still too hard, Charles? Because I don't even know. I feel like ha I feel like only Azure Vault and Nokut are too intricate trash mechanic. Actually, that's not even. I don't even know if I think that think about that about Azure Vault. I know that Nokut is is a bit too much for me. Nokut, obviously. I mean, that was just really early in the development cycle. That that yeah. was like it needs several iterations to be even playable. We couldn't even test it really. It was so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, a part of it's just that it's over tuned, right? Yeah. I did some, some no good last weekend. Yeah, that's a fun dungeon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Algathar is actually in a good spot. I'd say they could probably release yeah. Algathar live and it would just be a step above the old Legion dungeons, but still be pretty balanced, I'd say. Okay. Uh, Ruby Ruby's close. I think with a couple changes, it would be a really good dungeon. Yeah, um, uh, I, I quite like it. I do agree, though, in principle, filler mobs are great, and they should go from being like 0% of the dungeon to being like 20 or 30% of the mobs in a dungeon, yeah. <laughs> Whereas Shadow Moon, it's 80% of the yeah, mobs that, in a dungeon. <laughs> like, whenever there's a, a pack you can fall asleep on, that's obviously bad, but... I mean, that, that, that's why I just was like, damn, there's not much, <laughs> there's not much that's deadly in this dungeon. Well, I think Halls of Valor is just like a really good standard. Like if you go through, go through and pull that dungeon in a straight line, you're gonna have a pretty good time. And there's like one major challenge per pack, and that's perfect. They did a really fucking good job reworking that dungeon, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it's looking good. All right, and they did it without like fundamentally changing the abilities as well, which is so cool. Yeah, it it feels the same. It, it doesn't feel the same. It feels very similar. It feels like you're doing the same dungeon, but they made it. They took out all of the really really annoying shit. Yeah, it was really good. Um, uh, okay. Next question comes from Paul in Discord, who says, "Would love to hear a little bit about potentially what to do if you're interested in getting into casting. I know BDGG put out the call recently for Race World First casters, and some tips from a few vets sounds pretty lit." Hmm. You big, start? Uh, a big question. Do I want to start? No, I of course I don't want to start. I, I'm trying to think. Um, <laughs> um. Okay, I'll start. I mean, the first thing. I mean, like like Paul mentions there. I think that answering a casting call for BDGG casting whenever they put it out is, is like pretty good. Are you like? Yeah. It helps to be um, known and try to get an established audience beforehand because then you're more likely to get accepted for these kind of things. Um. And so, like, at least having some credentials, whether it be high-end rating, content creation, high-end M+, plus, um, a mixture of the three of those is definitely going to be your best bet so that you're kind of well-known. In addition to that, if you have, like, uh, like commentary-style videos or videos of you, like, casting bosses and stuff like that, um, I think that all of that stuff is pretty decent as, as like, an intro in. Do you, Dradness, do you think that people need, like, a casting reel? I don't have one. I don't have one either. So I guess... <laughs> objectively no 
if I was trying to get in and I didn't have a, like any, I hadn't casted anything before, would I? Well, I mean, that's the thing. You can't make one until you've casted stuff. But maybe yeah. once you've casted your first few things, you make one. Maybe I, I mean, should have one. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. Some of the original MDI casters had to send in like a reel they had to make casting a, like a, a boss a bowl or something, right? I had a cast or, or, yeah, a, yeah, a dungeon. So like they'll give you content, I guess, if you apply for jobs. Like, and, and I think just putting your foot in the door, like you said, is probably the best way and get some experience. See if you even like it. Like I did it once on, with BDGG, and I just didn't like it. Personally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not for everybody. That's that's for sure. Um, <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, you guys are crazy, man. I don't know how you do it every time. Uh, sleep. Yeah, I mean, like, so I obviously like I like that type of you know getting your foot in the door. Uh, in terms of like when you're actually casting, like tips, tips I would just give to like the average caster or to like any caster. Um, I don't know. I guess like it should never be a hundred percent memes, and it should also never be zero percent memes. It is. I agree. There's a vital, <laughs> a vital amount of them that, depending on what what show you're doing, it you have to kind of pick a different amount depending on what what is happening but like you should be capable of shifting gears between serious and joking based on what is going on on the screen and you should not be trying to be joking or be funny whenever there's really good serious stuff happening on the screen but then you shouldn't be trying to be serious whenever there's nothing happening uh, especially like if if there is something funny happening from the the other caster you don't want to shut that down ever you want to uh go in on it as well if if there's not something important to like talk about gameplay wise on the screen, but like, I guess try and identify what the moment calls for. And then don't be afraid of moving the tone yeah. in that direction. If you feel like currently it's in the wrong, wrong spot on that axis. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. All right. Our next question comes from Theune in discord who says, because they added a new healing spec and none of you heal, so it's funny. <laughs> what do you predict a solid healing comp will look like for a four heal and a five heal setup in uh, Dragonflight? I've actually been looking into this a little bit and talking to some other people. Oh, uh, um, good, good, because I have no idea. So I think it's, I think first off, especially with the HP changes, it's double paladin. Um, so the raw HP, HPS of double paladin is really high right now. In addition to that, um, the DR, like like Dreadness was talking about earlier in the show, uh, DRs got a lot better now um, with what's going on. So I think that we're going to move more towards that double paladin esque <laughs> meta. Back to that, and then the I guess I'm just going to say it for five healers. I think it's double priest and then like a one mist weaver slash evoker. I think double priest because like you can play double disc in a lot of situations, and they're one of the only like real heavy burst healers right now. Um, but at the same point, Double Priest allows you the advantage of like playing holy if you do feel like you need a bit more just like raw HPS throughput that somehow disc would be lacking in those situations than one Mistweaver slash Evoker. Because they do actually do pretty decent um, HPS throughput. If this was show was yesterday, would you have recommended disc still? Uh, before the changes, I think I would have recommended Double Priest even still. I think that I, I don't think that double disc is it. I don't think that double disc is for every boss fight. I do think that having two priests though is not bad. I just think the evangelism change was the uproar from it was. Uh, I interesting. yeah yeah. <laughs> I I think okay if the game went live with the current build right now, I think I would want to be on like two priests, a paladin, and an evoker on four, and then I don't know what I'd add on five, but. Uh, I, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting evoker pilled, uh, with, with this HP change, uh, and also with just the, the throughput that they can provide. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking it's a, it's a healthy part of a balanced breakfast. And then you maybe cut evoker? one for fights that don't need, uh, or where, where like, there are some fights where it's tremendous pain to, to play evoker because of the range. Like there, there are like two fights I was, I was looking at in Vault Incarnates where I, I wouldn't want to be playing that. And maybe with... Maybe with a, co a coordinated raid, you're in range, but like the area loss from that is still pretty bad. But yeah, I I, I like it for a lot of fights. Actually, I think Evoker is going to be good, a good healer. I think I, I think they're all surely it'll be good, right? Surely, there's surely. no way they'd let the new shiny class be bad. Um, but yeah, that's that's my guess right now. It's it's not based on much though. It's based it's based mostly on like feel from raid testing and uh and then the recent changes. But like 
I'm not I'm not really the person in charge of healing it, stuff for my guild. I'm I'm just I'm just here watching. If you if you look at like the raw HPS from raid testing, Paladin was like it, it just like healing plus overhealing Paladin was kind of like ahead and in addition to that mana is still going to be a concern for all the healers and paladins i mean they have the least amount of mana concerns although they are they are still going home in some of these situations so it's not solved for them either all right uh next question comes from doom the boomkin which if this person's name is doom and they are a boomkin not a fan if they're saying the verb doom like they want boomkins to be doomed <laughs> big fans uh, if you were to if, step if, he, <laughs> if he's actually a moonkin i'm a big fan so i'm trying to get one the reverse yeah okay uh if you were asked to step as a raid leader for a casual mythic guild how would you encourage them that they are capable of cutting edge for context we did it in nihilotha but we haven't all of shadowlands Ooh, that's tough i mean like honestly i i I would try and evaluate if I actually did think that they were capable of getting cutting edge and it would be reasonable okay. to try and go for it. And then I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to them if I didn't think that was true. <laughs> really? I, I feel like I would advocate for it either way. Cause like setting the bar high is just good for getting you close to that bar either way. Maybe. Yeah. I, I just, I hate when I hate this feeling in raid of like when there's an expectation set of what we're going to accomplish. And then it's like that expectation when the expectation is like high and then it's, you know, every raid feels like you're failing, right? It's like every time you wipe, it's like, oh, we shouldn't have wiped, right? Like, uh, I, I instead kind of like the environment to be more, uh, you know, obviously, like, there's a minimum we're trying to hit, but then it's impressive every time we go above that instead. So if Cutting Edge yeah. was, like, a a stretch goal for the guild, I wouldn't want to set it as an expectation, right? I I Because then I it would feel like failure when you didn't get there. I don't know. And I feel like that makes people play worse along the way. At least at least I I feel like people play worse when they are uh when they feel like they're kind of underperforming a, a goal but or an expectation, but it yeah, may depend true. on the type of person cuz I think there are some people who would be pushed to like pushed to make it happen once they see the goal in front of them and that it, it might depend on which kind of people are in your guild more. Actually, I think I agree with you now. I think if you were to say you're going to get CE and recruit based off that, especially, then you're going to attract the players that are just going to leave if you don't make it. Yeah. Like, I think if you want to build the guild long term or like increase everyone's skill that's there, is that if, that, if that's your goal, then probably don't tell them. Like, the downside of unreasonable. The downside of doing that though is like, um, like you're going to get a different quality of player between saying, "Oh yeah, we're a cutting edge guild, right?" and when we get cutting edge every tier. Versus like a guild that says, "Oh, we might get cutting edge, we might not," kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's like you're gonna get a different quality of player um, I mean, just from recruiting. I do think like trying to go for it, setting it as a goal, and telling everybody like, "Hey, you know, with the way we've been playing, like we could do this, right? If we okay. if we tighten up a little bit, we could we could make this happen. Like, uh, we're gonna try and break into cutting edge next year or something like that." And then like, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I do think it's possible. I in terms of like, how would I encourage them that they're capable of it? I don't know. I'd gas up the good players, lob the bad players, recruit good players, uh, try and go from there. But the problem I, I, is, I would probably set like some some low reach goals of improvement for the whole raid as a whole. Like this is our health zone health pot usage. We're terrible. We could definitely do better. Increase up this week. Double it. You know. Uh, oh yeah. Try to hit this mark on using your defensives over the course of a five minute fight. You know, stuff like that. You don't even have to like look it up for your guild. I promise you, if you're a guild that is trying to get cutting edge, you can just use health bots and health stones. I swear it is a hundred percent chance that you're not using enough of those. I yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that fostering a positive raid environment is how to encourage people that to like believe that they can do it. I yeah. That's like a, I mean, if you just have a positive raid environment, like it's not, it, are you going to be successful based solely off having a positive raid environment? No. Does it definitely help <laughs> along the way if you not don't have like a a lot of toxicity and a decent amount of turnover? Yes, and I mean tur turnover happens at like these a lot of turnover happens at like these low cutting edge ranked guilds like the the guilds that are on the the cusp of getting cutting edge. Those guilds have some of the most turnover, and so like I respect the hustle of trying to get that every single tier. It's it's a grind for sure. All right, next question comes from. Joey, who says, if Tettles and Trell were legally forced to play a different class and spec, what would their new mains be? Brawl Warrior. For, for right now? 
Jave, you're legally forced. Uh, okay, so generally I play Hunter. I just play Hunter. Yeah, I was, I was thinking you'd play Hunter, yeah? Because you've played a little bit of that in the past. I don't I don't think that... <laughs> Hunter has not been looking like, oh my god, I, I want to play it, especially since they don't have a raid buff. But like, I would I would be a Hunter player. That's how it goes. How much of your thought process would be based on like tr picking a spec where you could be the... You could you know, do the wow head guide writing and stuff like you do for Moonkin. Like, would you, would you look and try and be Shit. like, oh um, man, the hunter guide writer is good. Cause I think the hunter guide writer is good and try and like yoink one of the, the weaker spots or something. I think yeah, this, that... is, this is a harder question for titles. I think. Yeah. Cause I would just play whatever is good on tanking and all that has a decent DPS spec. I don't think I would do it again. If it was not for Moonkin. Okay. I think that I only, I think I only do it because I really, really enjoy Moonkin and the community that much. I think that if I was like re-rolling Fodum every tier and stuff like that, I, I would not focus on Wowhead guide writing for, for a class like that. It, Fair it, enough. It is a lot of work and it is certainly it is. just a passion project. Can you imagine like learning an entire class and then also maintaining the guide for it really fast? That'd be a, that'd be so much work. Yeah, I mean people are a lot of people like are, were scrambling to try and do that for Evoker, right? Uh when the whenever a new spec or class gets added. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, next question comes from John, who says, what add-ons do you think are most crucial for M+, specifically big wigs for warnings, weak auras, or both? Yeah, I mean, okay, obviously, like, weak auras is add-on number one. I guess MDT is probably add-on yeah. number two. Although, depending on your group, you may not need to actually have MDT installed, but... Uh... <laughs> Holy shit. If you see, I would say big wigs is out of number two. I've just, I just say Diffin XD of Tychondria has gotten uh, all three of the hero titles and has not ever installed the MDT. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's I, I, like big wigs for warnings. Yeah, big wigs and little wigs, a pretty good combo. Um, I'd say ninety percent of all the things you'd ever need would be in big wigs slash little wigs and plus weak auras. You can make it work. In terms of which weak auras are good, there's that uh, machine learning cast thing that can a lot of people like uh that like oh yeah it's just if you just have that one weak or it will like put an icon next to each mob and it'll like learn what their cooldown is of that ability and stuff and that thing's kind of broken i believe that's reloads weak or right i thought it was fired ups but i don't think it actually is i i, I, I think i think fired up got it from reload and then everyone that's, thought it was fired ups that's what I the think. lore i think that's what the lore on it may be i think that reload also like put you guys don't think fired up is smart enough to code that ah that's so messed up <laughs> well he's going to he's going to school for computer science yeah could have been um but i think that real put a big asterisk on that week where saying that it could be disabled at any given moment yeah i think that's yeah. a reasonable chance um an auto marker week or is something to consider as well especially if you're a tank uh oh absolutely yeah those... And if you're looking for that, I'll be putting that on all my YouTube guides, like an updated auto marker for this season. Wow, that's where where could I find those YouTube guides though? If I was, I guess I could I could probably Google search Trelsky or what would that be? What would be the best way to find your YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, YouTube.com search Trelsky. I don't think it's YouTube YouTube.com slash Trelsky. Ah, wow, that's messed up. But surely a search would find it, and uh, we'll put links and stuff to it. Surely as well. We're also, we've also been putting. Uh, we also keep the. We gotta purge the Weekora channel now soon. Yes, because I'm sure half yeah, of those we, are bad. Yeah, yeah. We got we gotta clean it up. Someone's been like advertising their own personal Weekora several times too. So we got to oh, oh. gotta whip out oh, the old on. ban hammer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, let's move on to. We've got a couple more questions, but first we've got our tip of the week segment. My tip of the week is be careful if you're using press and hold casting, the new feature. There was this Reddit post I saw, and I I haven't looked into this at all myself, but this Reddit post says that uh, you don't get spell queuing when you're using press and hold casting. So spell queuing is where if you're like spamming one, it will effectively count as if you had started casting as soon as you were off global. But instead of waiting for like the ping delay between you and the server, but apparently this is not working with press and hold casting. I'm not sure if this is 100% true. I'm not sure if this is going to be fixed or if this has been fixed or if anything like this is happening. But all I'm saying is if you like press and hold casting and you want to use it, at least check to make sure that you are not experiencing this. And the way you can do this is by getting a log, or do, running a log and just seeing if there is delay between when you should be able to start casting and when you actually are able to start casting. Uh, and if there is some of that, you're going to be experiencing a substantial DPS loss based on how much your ping is uh, for using this feature. So be careful. I am stunned that yeah. it doesn't spell queue up spells. That Again, is so I, weird to me. 
I haven't looked into this at all beyond seeing this post. And all, all I'm saying is, if you want press and hold casting, which I don't want anyway, so I, I'm not, uh, I'm not too, I'm not like looking this into this personally. But uh, if that's something you care about, just make sure that it isn't doing that for you, because I don't know what conditions this happens in or anything like that. Yeah, I was kind of worried about that when I saw that this was an option. Like, I, I was, I was wondering if this is going to be a problem. So it's a little scary. According to careful. chat. It's, it's, it's hard it's, to it's hard to see that this is a problem like when you're doing it in real time except for when you're looking at a log. According to somebody in chat, it says it's like it's similar to putting your lag tolerance at zero and then you miss casts because you're mm -hmm. not spell queuing because then you just have your uh, base MS ping yeah. uh, separating every single cast. That's right. What, that's what's kind of implied. Which I mean, in theory, that press and hold casting should they should be able to make spell queuing work with it. Uh, and if if they if if true, then it's very bad that it doesn't do that, and that's something yeah, that needs to change. So about I Again, but again, haven't that. actually looked into it enough to like be, and, and I probably should have uh, gone and like tested this for <laughs> ten minutes so that I could actually say with some certainty. But uh, from this post, it looked it looked pretty concerning. All right, Trell, what is your tip of the week? Oh God, uh, my tip of the week is touch some grass because I could not come up with a better one. <clears throat> but also, if you're mowing your lawn, you may want to start with the edges around the lawn that are uneven first, so you get like less downtime while mowing. A cleaner cut when you go across again and you kind of reduce your time spent mowing the lawn and then you kind of want to come back and do the straight edges of the lawn last so you get like a clean finish can how do you uh how do you mow stripes into your yard i cannot tell you honestly i don't know how some people do that okay would you also advise people to stretch their wrists regularly uh yes definitely take care of yourself ergonomically Get a sanding desk so that you can adjust your wrist height to the exact height you need. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Tuttle's clip of the week, which uh, this one does require audio. This one also requires video. So if you're just listening along, you're not going to experience this clip in its full glory and you should come watch it later. Uh, but this comes from old TTV, Yummy TV. as one of the best clips I've ever seen. <laughs> this is a good clip. Can I get one heel? <laughs> Can Amazing. Play that, can you play that? Can you play it one more time? Yeah, yeah. In case you missed it. Okay, here we go. Can I get one heal? <laughs> Beautiful. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That'll show him. Truly, uh, uh, honestly, just incredible. Yeah. This is a great clip. <laughs> All right, we go back to the questions. Uh. All right, next question comes from Moth in Discord, who says, A main topic I'd love to hear about is how to best watch and learn from your own gameplay and put this into practice next time you play. Because I think we've talked about a bit before about like recording and watching your own gameplay being a good thing, but uh, specific tips, I guess, for doing that. Um, yeah. Trell, I think, I think you're maybe the most adept out of the three of us actually at doing this. Oh, like what to look for specifically when yeah. you watch back? Yeah. It's, I'd say it's you, you want to like maybe mute the VOD if you're watching yourself so you don't get into the same mindset that you were in when you were first playing it, if that makes sense. Like you want to actually look for other things that you wouldn't have been thinking about in the moment because like your brain's only capable of focusing on so many things all at once. So you're going you're gonna to like pay less attention to some things on the sides. And if you're watching a VOD of yourself playing, you want to see all those other things more prominent and try to like figure out what's going wrong or what you can do to do better in those situations. So, or maybe what other people are doing around you that you didn't see at the moment. That yeah. you should have been aware of that kind of thing one thing I, I like to look at is just like look at your cooldown like scrub through the video and just see how long your cooldowns are sitting available and not used and then how long uh, they're they're actually on cooldown i think that's a good thing to quickly check yeah. through and you can see like that's a great thing to look for am i uh, oh i'm just i've literally pressed icebound fortitude once this dungeon or something like that like i need to to use that thing more often or uh you know if you're a dps player like oh I'm sitting on this cooldown way too much and like where are the places because you, you can look in Warcraft logs and it can show you or you can look in details and see how many times you cast it over the course of the dungeon but like that doesn't really give you a good idea of like are you walking from one point to another with it off cooldown versus like are you in the middle of combat near the start of a pull and you could press it. One of the biggest things that I notice so like whenever I'm watching back my VOD is like it's normally like positional stuff um, relative to where I am or like where I am relative to like a, a trash pack or the boss or whatever. And kind of it because like whenever I'm in the moment, I am paying really hard attention to my character not getting hit by mechanics and that kind of stuff. 
But whenever yeah. I'm able to kind of like take a step back and not and I'm not focusing on my rotation or like doing damage and stuff like that, I can really focus on like what's actually happening on a more macro level around the room. And so I feel like whenever I'm able to watch back my VOD, I just look for like the more macro level mistakes that I'm making where I'm like, oh yeah, I, I could actually be positioned differently here. Oh, I could have pre-moved this. So that way I didn't have this issue 30 seconds into the future. Um, and so those are the kind of things that I'm looking for. But I'm also like, we're only standing 30 yards away from the mob and like things are, things are generally a, a bit different for ranged as opposed to like melees or tanks. Because I, I, I would suspect for tanks, like if you're watching back a VOD, I think the best thing is like learning how to improve, maybe even how to set up a pull. Uh, I think that that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's this pack one. actually took five seconds to get in because I didn't pull it correctly. Maybe I should pull it a little bit differently next time. Yeah, and that's a good example because in the moment you're you're super focused on just staying alive and getting threat. That's like your whole purpose for that like next ten seconds. But like if you look at the VOD, there's probably a better way. Your your buddy could throw a weapon at some mob instead of you waiting five seconds to pull it or something to get it there faster. And then as long as long as the group is aware that's happening, you know that should be fine. Or you notice that you're doing like a really poor offensive rotation while you're doing a good defensive rotation on the side, which is good. But you could always probably improve it a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't normally, like, maybe if I'm really messing something up, I don't necessarily critique, like, rotational stuff. Do you guys normally look at rotational issues whenever you're, like, looking back at VODs? I normally look it back at, like, oh, what am I messing up, like, almost at, like, a base level position? Like, I think it's pretty low stuff. priority, but yes. I'd okay. say looking at what you do when you're under pressure is pretty good. Like, yeah. Do you have, like, some weird habit of not pressing something important while you're under heavy pressure, you know? That's something to look at. Yeah, I think some like sometimes you can reveal like, oh, I'm pressing this button too much or oh, I'm not ever pressing this button whenever I'm like not thinking about it. Uh, and so I need to like yeah. try and do that more. But yeah, it's usually like I usually won't do like a full like sim rotation comparison or whatever. I'll do like a log review normally if I'm like really if, if I feel like I'm really messing up my uh, rotation yeah. or something like that. Or I'll, get, I'll, I'll just get some I'll just like bounce an idea off somebody else and be like, oh, what do you think I'm messing up here? If I feel like my damage is like super low yeah, for whatever or, reason. Or, or I'll try and compare like a, a good tank doing the same pull or something or a good, <laughs> you know, a good player of the same spec or whatever doing the same pull and see like, okay, what, why is my damage low here? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think it's also really valuable maybe this is just a tank thing, but if you have someone else in your group that recorded, looking at their side of the story is really good as a tank. Like, you may not know that you put your melee DPS in like the worst situation in the world several times throughout the key or something, and you're like, oh, I could easily fix that. You know, I just didn't know yeah. I was doing that. Yeah, or you, not, look at the... you may not have known who got hit by that Sanctify. <laughs> <laughs> now I know, yeah. No need like, to put that. Um, uh, also, like looking at your healer's POV is pretty big too as a tank. Like, you know what they're capable of more if you watch their gameplay. You know when they have bigger healing available for you, so you can press less buttons. You know, you could you could optimize your own defenses better in that case. There's I, there's a lot of things you could do. I uh, Depending on the healer, I really have to make sure that I'm diligent about, like, positioning around them. Because there are some healers, like Holy Paladin and, and kind of Evoker as well, where you, you need to have, like, a different level of awareness to where you're like, oh, okay, I'm not going to get healed if I'm playing with this healer, whereas I could if I was playing with the rest of Druid, who is also talented in the plus five yard range or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. doing Noko defensive with an evoker, I was constantly just like, okay, where's my evoker? Where's my evoker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's my evoker? Like, that's a <laughs> um, huge part of the thought process. What's the mess? What do you think the best way of making VODs are? I mean, I have them already because I'm streaming, right? Uh, okay. I, I think OBS and just hit you know, set up setting up to record with OBS is probably very. I think it's pretty lightweight, uh, so I probably yeah. recommend that. I think a lot of people use Shadow Play if they don't stream. I'm sure that's fine too. Yeah, that's I, a uh, really good tool. I actually like to unlisted stream on YouTube fairly regularly as well. Um, <laughs> that's another good VOD, way. Yeah, for VOD resources, I also find that YouTube's player for just like clicking through VODs is like a decent bit better than Twitch. <laughs> so I, I I like that one, but. Uh, I think that I think that I would stream. I wouldn't want to record everything locally. That sounds like it's just a waste of hard drive space. I all would right. just do both all the time, but it's hard on my computer. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... All right. Next question is uh, from Sat, who says, "What is one spell from your main specs you see as criminally underused in pugs, raid or M plus?" Let's see. I guess I'm going to count this as blood DK for me. Uh. Me, 
maybe Lichborn? I feel like people don't press enough for DR with the conduit. That thing is a lot of DR. Rune tap, maybe? R uh, yeah, rune tap's a weird one because, like, in some cases, it's overused. It's not ideal, right? Yeah. It's not ideal for, for rune generation and all that, but it can I mean, save I, your life for sure. I press it a lot. When, when I was pushing the, for title, I was pressing it a lot. But when I was when I was pushing for cutting edge or whatever, I didn't press. I pressed it. I think a lot less than a lot of DKs do on raid bosses. Um, so yeah, that one's a weird one because it, it is very. It's like bad to press it if you don't need to, but it's obviously incredible to press if you do. Yeah, I think that's good design though. Having that. Yeah, option. that's that spell is sweet. That's that is a great design spell. I agree. Yeah. How about you, Trell? What, what, what brewmaster spell? It clash. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say Clash. Yeah, for Brewmaster, definitely Clash. People didn't use it very much. It, for one thing, it was kind of buggy and it was yeah. hard to use. Uh, but if you knew how to use it well, then you could actually stop a lot of things with it. You could master things. You could actually move things across a fence to the group if you knew like the specific way they had the path. It's kind of cool. Um, but sadly, you're not you're not really ever gonna take Clash anymore. It's it's like there's no way you sacrifice something for that ability in Dragonflight talents. Tunnels, how about you? What it's, be uh, like, it's it's either like Entangling Root or it's Typhoon. I think that Moonkins in general don't use Typhoon that often because it's like kind of a pain in the ass and like you have to pre-position. Positioning well to use Typhoon relative to other players is not exactly super intuitive unless you kind of know what's going on. And so it's just you kind of end up in a situation where you don't press it enough. I think it's maybe Barkskin because Barkskin could be just like also used on site. Like you may as well just press that thing on CD. There's, it's, what about a uh, one of the cyclone? Of you don't clone things. No, 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 no. That's that's how you get old string though. I, you know, I, I can identify a good moon camp if they if they cycle something that's about to get bolstered five times. I think that's that a, I've cloned play. I've cloned things like five times, maybe the whole expansion. Um, I don't, I don't think it's underused. I think it's used the appropriate amount, which is nearly never. <laughs> Okay, well, that's fair too. That's I fair. think that there are some situations Nearly where never. you can't. I think where you can press it, and it is uh, an advantage. But I think that like, and you could save yourself a lot of grief. But I think in general, it's like, I mean, there's a lot of there's a a lot of things have to go wrong for you to be wanting to clone a mob and not actually yeah. hit it and do damage to it. Well, I think you're you're right about the typhoon for sure. Like the uh, the slow tanks get from typhoon to mobs is actually really big. I don't think a lot of people think about that. And I should have said I should have said this for one walker too. Flying serpent kick is a huge AOE slow for a few seconds. It's I know all time, yeah. yeah. For uh, for warlocks, it's curses. Mm -hmm. Curse of tongues, curse of weakness, both very very powerful. Those curses are insanely good. They are so good. All right, our next question comes from Kyrasis in Discord. He says, if you were looking for subtopics, apparently there's some drama with world slash PvP buffs that could be used in M+, that saw increased use at the end of this season. Something like, I, th I think it was 5% primary stat, and uh, uh, Kyrasis says 10% stamina. I don't know how much stamina I gave. I thought it was 5% as well, but maybe it's 10% stamina. Uh, making keys around a level easier than they otherwise would have been. Uh, yeah, Oof. so I knew about this bug. This the quest was called Zenkiki the Druid from the Western yeah. Plaguelands, and when you got it shared with you, you got a Mark of the Wild, uh, like a quest Mark of the Wild buff that persisted into M plus and gave five percent primary stat and some amount of stamina as well. Um, yeah, yeah, ban those. Remove so those. the drama related to it was that there were like, I want to say like two or three groups um, that were like streaming, and you would like tune in and they all had the Zenkiki buff and they were like really struggling with like cut off like around marginal cut off level keys and you're just like and then and then it was like oh should they actually get the rank one and plus title because they probably wouldn't have timed those keys without the Zenkiki buff that was kind of the drama that was surrounding it and so now they're i mean i don't i don't think that blizzard is going to do anything but there's a question of like oh will people get dq'd who used slash abused the zenkiki buff yeah i would love for there to be consistency of enforcement on these kinds of things from like season to season and like some more clear guidelines of like what will and won't get you banned because honestly the way i see it right now is like yeah blizzard probably isn't going to do anything about this so 
it's kind of smart to have used it. Sh if so should they be to. banned? I don't think they should be banned, but I don't think that they should get the title either. There's just like a weird, there's a weird nuance, right? Where it's like, I don't, I don't know. Do I, like M plus is like, it, it, if, if you're not going to get in trouble for it, you should use it. Yeah. Um, that's typically how it goes. Yeah. That's, that is how it goes. Unfortunately. Yeah. I, I like, I, I would like this. I would like it to be like a more clear cut that like, yeah, you know, if you use something like this, you you will always get in trouble for it, and therefore it's not like correct to do it. But I don't know, man. G given that, it, like, I actually I do think you're probably like ninety five plus percent to get away with, to get away with it on this one. Like, I don't blame anybody for using it at all. And I, uh, yeah. So if Blizzard wants to to remove titles for this and potentially ban for it as well, I I would love for it to be accompanied with a post saying and in future anything like this will be met with the the same response um that would be a really big thing for me because like there's a lot of stuff that people that is sort of like this in m plus that people get away with from season to season yeah i'm not even i'm not even really that mad about it it was just more like uh there was some drama yeah associated with it yeah did I mean, they fix it yet do we know uh, it got yes. Fixed, yeah, I think. it's fixed. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. good. Okay, yeah. I, I got it shared with me on the. <laughs> on I have this on beta. beta. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have some Kiki the Druid in my beta quest oh, log. <laughs> I got so, Dude, I, I, I zoned into a group that, with people that I don't normally play with, and somebody just like shares the Zig yeah. Kiki quest, and then somebody else in the group goes, "No fuck way, you have that on beta." <laughs> it's so funny, yeah. But I, uh, yeah, uh, oh. I do think it was it. If you knew you were getting title anyways, it would have been a mistake to to get this just on the off chance that they DQ or ban over it. But if you were going to be close, I don't know. I think it, probably, it probably was correct to use this to get over the finish line because I do think you're not going to get in trouble. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would prefer to not have like thinking about if this exploit is something you can get away with be a thing. Anyways, next question coming up now uh, is, do you have an idea on how the server first achievement for the first plus 20 timed will work? Do all members of the same team need to be from the same server? Is it rule specific? Can you transfer and get it and then transfer back and keep it? So I actually think I know the rules on this. I think it's three people from the same realm have, yeah. to, have to be That's it has to been, get yeah. it. And I think you're only eligible for realm first after you've been on a server for like a month or something. It's like, so, It used to be like 60 days. Okay. So maybe a month or maybe two months. Yeah. So maybe it's too late already for doing it if you want the Dragonflight one from a less populated server. Uh, but then, yeah, you do, I think, get to keep it as well after you earn it and if you transfer servers. Uh, yes, I do still have my Zul'jin one after I transferred. Oh, yeah. okay. Nice. So I believe that is how that functions. And you have to time the 20 as well. E That's probably yeah. assumed, but you do have to time it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question comes from Twitch chat uh, from Vidal, who says, what kind of tools do you use to communicate during keys? Something like each member assigned a marker to focus kicks and such. I want to tank in Dragonflight and I want to be prepared to push higher keys. I've been in some groups where, yeah, the tank will, like the tank, especially if you're not using voice, the tank can start, sometimes start a key and they'll have an auto marker and they'll just say, you always get X, you always get diamond, you always get circle or whatever. Um, I'll always get first kick on, you know, whatever. And something like that, like that. Those sorts of conventions can be useful. Um, I think in general, like an auto marker, and then maybe you have like one of those marks kind of always assigned, and then the rest, I think you usually, if yeah. you're in voice, you want to call out um, during the pull because like different pulls, sometimes circle will need two kicks, sometimes it'll need one, right? And that sometimes circle will get marked and it's a stun and not a kick. Um, so I th that's the I way think, to go because yeah. if you're not in voice, sometimes your auto marker will will send the next set of marks on the yeah. mobs. Like if you're still in combat from the last mobs, you're like Spifles keeping you in combat or explosive or something. So something might happen where they have different marks than intended, but there's, they'll still be marked at least. So you just want to make sure that uh, you're marking them in the first place. And that's like 80% of the work. And voice, like you said, you could just tell someone, so-and-so kick skull, so-and-so X, this bull, whatever. Um, but like what I was doing in no voice pugs was I was letting my auto marker go and I would just say diamond to every single bull. So they knew I was going to kick diamond, the most important mob. And then hopefully they could work out the other two kicks, or however many there were in the pool. Tettles, how about you? Got any uh, any communication tips that you like for keys? I don't. I, I think that I think that you guys pretty hit on cool. hit on everything that I would have to say. Most of it comes from the tank. Um, in most groups, I will say. All right. Next question. Uh. Could you do a rapid-fire tier list of most durable range specs? 
coming into Dragonflight. Warlock. Uh, it's war. It's warlock, <laughs> and then it's mage, and then I think it's actually everything else. <laughs> war warlock is okay. So there are a ton of melee specs right now that are crazy durable. Windwalker, Havoc, Demon Hunter, Enhance, all in insane durability um, with the amount of defenses they got. I think the only range spec that even can compete with some of those melee are is is warlock in particular. Um, and then mage is like mage is very strong. They're they're given like GI, and then they still have barrier. Um, immunities, they can talent cauterize if they want to. Although they're and what is GI for those who haven't been following along with uh? Great, it's greater invis. Okay, um, it gives them a DR and it, it immediately pops sixty percent, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it like still just DR. magic DR? I think it is just uh, magic, right? Oh, is it? Uh, is oh, is it is actually it? just only magic? I thought I it was pretty cool. Sure. Yeah, was everybody. But yeah, I think I think it's warlock and this mage and it's like every other spec. It's fun. It's funny because like Moonkin does not feel that tanky relative to some of those other specs, <laughs> but which is like. It may be gaslighting, but it actually is like, oh, okay, I'm noticed will be less tanky than Demon Hunter and Windwalker Monk and Warlock. And like, oh, it's all DR. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. it's a uh, uh, dampen or def yeah, dampen magic or something. It's dampen. Yeah. yeah. Or <laughs> diffuse magic. Diffuse magic. Dampen harm is all. Dif diffuse magic is uh, is just the magic one for Windwalker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that about lines up with mine as well. I think for like for a raid context, Hunter. I'd be a little bit worried about like just rotting rot damage still on, but uh, yeah. Pre change, I was like, "Holy shit, this is a paper mache fucking." Class. Yeah, they, they buffed that pretty pretty effectively, though. I think. Yeah, I was evoker defensively now. I think middle of the pack now, which is like pretty good. It's it, it feels like there's a the strong middle of the pack, and then there feels like there was like like four or five classes that are like, "Holy shit, these are broken." Yeah. All right, uh, next question comes from Preple. Preply. What are each of your goals for Dragonflight, personal, guild, and as content creators? <laughs> hmm. uh, I'll start, I guess. Um, okay. No goals content creation-wise, just have fun. Okay. Nice. Uh, personal goals, push high Mythic Plus and, and raid high at, at a high level, if possible, with my current group of friends and guild. And that's about it. Cool. Yeah, um, I I'm also not a particularly like goal based person. Like I don't I don't like set set goals. I mean, you, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier with the cutting edge thing for guild like that. For me personally, that's not a uh, a mindset that really helps me. So I also don't really have like specific like I don't have like a world rank goal or anything like that uh, for mm -hmm. the guild. Just like play in such a way that. I don't know. We're proud of ourselves at the end of the day. Uh, content creation, yeah. Make some good content. I don't know. I don't have any like subscriber goals or growth goals or anything like that. Yeah. You don't want to commit to making a video every single day of the entire expansion? No. No. Absolutely I did not. do daily videos for like a month and a half, two years ago. That was, it was good times. So I might do that again I at some point. That, yeah. But yeah, it's, that was draining. Tell us how I you got any goals. I, do a, I definitely do have more goals than you guys. For content creation wise, was it's like there's a couple of things like continue to make content for the gg wow channel um that that is like one of the biggest like goals and then it's just like so don't get fired yeah okay good goal yeah it, it, don't get fired <laughs> um uh be signed to a race world first org for or not race world first org but like be signed to a race world first casting thing um for everyone yeah yeah for all of them yeah so i can continue to uh, do this as my job. This is my career. That's 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 one of my major goals. Your like, goals like creator. keep the dream alive. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I, mean, I guess doing, me I'm, too. I'm actually doing okay. Um, and then guild wise, I mean, I just joined a new guild, but I I just wanted to raid more hours and uh, like raid at a higher rank and stuff like that. I don't I don't think I have any like unrealistic expectations. What are the goals? I think just to play well and to be as useful to the guild as possible. Good goals. I think that's a good mindset because, like, I'm I'm mostly just here to have fun. Like, I have a career outside of content creation, but you guys are heavy into it. And I, you're still pretty relaxed about it, which I like to see. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be fun, right? Like, I, I think that I think that taking it too seriously is like, it's not healthy for me. Um, I mean, I've definitely noticed that I've started getting a little more stressed lately, looking at all the dates for everything. I'm like, holy shit, all this is coming up. But like, it's just natural. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. It, there is like a very hectic month in a month for us but uh, <laughs> true yeah i don't know this should be fun yeah i think it should be fun i'm excited all right 
we may it looks like maybe the expected thing that there may not be a may, we'll we'll do a quick uh thinking of the patrons and then we may have something else or we may not before the end of the show we'll see uh, but big thank you to our patrons for helping make the show possible they are paul riley maybe i'll fly away from wow and dragonflight and finally be fully free but i doubt it for i always come back never knew <laughs> ja oh, yeah. drown as a dino filler but... yeah people trying to quit wow the mao uh, wow. Chrome, Trekkie, Chewy. Feel your heartbeat? That's your ghost chipping away of its cell, and it always succeeds in escaping one day. Well, guess. ZivXX, Salty Senny. Is this just going to be a new thing where just always going to have to contemplate our own mortality during the Patreon things? <laughs> Dude, I added Nasumi, and I was like, all right, for every dark acronym you do, you have to do a positive, happy one the next week. Okay. Um, Nacris, Sinmora, Tankdil, Nevuk, Eevee Survival Main. No trick, I forgot I was subbed here. Dimat, Loofer, Rework Mistweaver. Today's show was brought to you by the letter F, the number 8, and the amber waves of Tettles' hair. Nyx, what? Delete Gaming, Gallic, Brusive, Dranosharge Abyss. Why pug when you can peg? M Sanity, Xena, Rogue is now good enough for Prague, but still bad enough to be sat for SLG, bless up. Red Color, YouTube.com slash Workbringer, Alphabet Soup, Druid Friends of Evolved Gaming, Number 1 Simsky for Trelsky, Lurka wants to remind the world that it's not my fault. Milk, 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 milk. Sife, Pone, Windwalker Mugs deal with Nurse by rolling with the punches. Due to Sims with four piece, Skelly will be going back to Elemental from Enhance. PI for sale, I have crafting to level. The Marsh Hair, Veil Striders of R. Why do hardcore raiders smell? Because they never wipe. Oh, you'd be surprised, we wipe <laughs> way more than the sweet. average person, actually, if you think about it. In fact, if you think about it, it's probably the LFR players. Uh, but uh, I digress, I digress. Big head, small, small brain. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Narnar TV is back and ready to press Starfall. Actually, be the people who don't raid at all, right? They never wipe, if you think about it. No, well, the Malformers, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks all for the uh, for the support. Last call for uh, if there's any anything for us to cover. I think there probably won't be, Any, huh? Anything go ahead yet? Uh... Yeah, it looks like not. All right, well, whatever it is, uh we'll talk about whatever it might be next week if it does if there we've just heard rumblings that there's stuff coming out with a beta build or something soon so <laughs> it's we'll fine see. yeah uh go, go check wowhead uh, there'll be a post and i'm sure at some point probably in the two minutes after we end this and also uh check tettles youtube uh snap reaction video will be coming out there so uh make sure to check that out and uh yeah we'll be back next week with a ui focused episode so follow at titanforge wow Join the Discord to uh, potentially join that conversation. That's going to be it for us, though, this week. Later, gamers. Goodbye. Later.